This is CBN News Watch. It is Wednesday, November 18th. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, a brutal ideological battle in Washington, not between Democrats and Republicans, but within the Democratic Party over just why the party lost so many seats in the last elections. As the coronavirus spreads, the number of restrictions are also growing rapidly across the country. We're going to bring you a look at some of the latest regulations. China on its way to building a new empire. We're going to show you their growing power in global politics, its economy, and its military. And country music legend Dolly Parton. We're going to tell you how she's done her part to help defeat the coronavirus. All those stories and more are ahead in this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to begin, though, with that battle in Congress, not between the two parties. It's infighting among Democrats in the House. They were at war after Republicans made big gains in this year's elections. Moderates and liberals are blaming each other. And although House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to hold on to her position, the party division may be around for quite a while. Jenna Browder brings us that story now from Washington. Democrats still hold the majority, but it is razor thin. And as they look to elect House leadership this week, there's a lot of in-party fighting between moderates and progressives. We still have the power of, of the majority, but on top of that, our leverage and our power is greatly enhanced by having a Democratic president in the White House. Speaker Nancy Pelosi putting a positive spin on the outcome, while Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy claimed a decisive victory. We won from Miami to Oklahoma City to New York to California. Not one Republican incumbent lost. And with 17 GOP women elected to the House, McCarthy says this is the year of Republican women. 12 Democrat incumbents lost. And you know the unique thing of who they lost to? Every single Democrat either lost to a Republican woman minority or veteran. This is the year of the Republican women. And that spells concern for Democrats. In this House Democratic Caucus conference call obtained by the Washington Post, moderate Democrat Abigail Spanberger from Virginia pointed her finger at talk of socialism and defunding the police. We need to not ever use the word socialist or socialism ever again. Congresswoman-elect Dilvira Salazar says that's why she won her district in Florida. Socialism was what made it. We know what the ideology brings, misery, oppression, and exile. And my people responded. My opponent declared herself a pragmatic socialist. The Hill's Julia Manchester on the heated in-party fighting. The progressive agenda has always been, it's been an uphill climb for progressives in the House because, you know, as much as Republicans want to paint Nancy Pelosi as a progressive, as ultra, you know, ultra left wing and such, she isn't. Nancy Pelosi is very much a pragmatist. So I think there's still going to be some push and pull between the establishment wing in the House, where the Nancy Pelosi or Steny Hoyer from Mer uh, Maryland versus, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the squad, if you will. Even with the narrow margin over the GOP and the squabbling in her caucus, CBN chief political analyst David Brody says Pelosi will remain speaker. Was Nancy Pelosi is going to continue to be Speaker of the House. I mean, I can't imagine a scenario where there's going to be this huge uprising. Will there be some discontent? Yes. Will there be some murmuring? Sure. Will there be a lot of complaining? Absolutely. If Speaker Pelosi can hold on to her seat, the question then becomes, can she rally enough Democrats around her to advance her agenda? We'll see. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Thank you, Jenna. As the legal battle goes on over the presidential election and Joe Biden moves ahead with plans to assume the presidency, President Donald Trump has fired the top U.S. cybersecurity official Chris Krebs. The president taking the action Tuesday, days after Krebs' agency denied claims of voter fraud during the election. Krebs was the director of cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security. The president called Krebs' statement, quote, highly inaccurate in that there were massive improprieties and fraud. While Krebs tweeted, honored to serve, we did it right. The deadly rise in the number of COVID-19 cases across the country is forcing leaders to adjust plans for fighting the coronavirus, with Republican governors adopting mask mandates and schools giving up on plans to reopen their classrooms. The number of restrictions is growing even as the White House Corona Task Force warned an aggressive, unrelenting spread of the disease. Charlie Naren brings us a story. 
With Thanksgiving just a week away, the CDC has issued new COVID-related guidelines, urging Americans to stay home and not travel, while limiting plans for those seeking to gather for the holiday. The recommendations include wearing a mask, social distancing, and hosting a small number of guests for Thanksgiving dinner outdoors. The CDC even putting out a map to show those still considering holiday travel where outbreaks are the worst. Health officials issuing the guidance as the coronavirus at nearly one quarter of a million deaths and more than 11 million infections is raging throughout the nation. In a statement Tuesday, the White House Coronavirus Task Force calling the spread aggressive and unrelenting, without evidence of improvement, but rather further deterioration. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley tweeting he's in quarantine after testing positive. From coast to coast, long lines of cars as people wait to get tested before Thanksgiving. And another run on stores has left shelves empty. Governors and mayors mandating severe restrictions, some more extreme than earlier this year, as a new wave of cases shatter records. Philadelphia banning indoor gatherings of any size, public or private. Health officials warning that without dramatic action, city hospitals could be overrun by the end of the year. It means no indoor parties, group meals, football watching groups, no visiting between households, no indoor weddings, funerals, baby showers. With record cases in California, Governor Gavin Newsom is halting plans to reopen, placing most of the state back under the strictest set of rules, including a ban on indoor worship services and the closure of local businesses. This is simply the fastest increase California has seen since the beginning of this pandemic. Ohio and other states now enforcing a mask mandate. While some may question the new restrictions, Dr. Craig DeLisi of Titus Regional Medical Center in Mount Pleasant, Texas, says it's important to keep others safe this holiday season, including taking precautions in the days before you travel. You know you're going to go to family gatherings where there's going to be especially older relatives that could be sick or, or more vulnerable, that maybe that means that for the week or two preceding, you, know, you should, should do less of especially unnecessary types of things. Meanwhile, Pfizer says it has met requirements for emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration for its vaccine and plans to file the application in a number of days. The FDA says approval could take two to four weeks. Pfizer says as soon as it's approved, the vaccine could ship that night. And overnight, the FDA authorized the first fully at-home COVID testing kit. It will allow people to get results at home within 30 minutes or less. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Coming up is China's leader on a mission to fulfill an historic mandate of global domination. We're going to bring you a look at the rise of China's new empire when we come back. definition of when life begins. Watch Dan and Dale tackle trending topics that test your faith on the next Faith Wire, Monday night at 9.30. The Global Lane takes you around the world, providing facts over fiction. What might rising trade and geopolitical tensions mean for you on the home front? With over 45 years of experience, award-winning journalist Gary Lane brings you the truth from a global angle. What about the issue of immigration? World news analysis you won't see anywhere else. And it's all right here on The Global Lane. Watch The Global Lane, Thursday night at 9.30.
Get the top political news and analysis from Washington on Faith Nation, tonight at 6 Eastern, only on the CBN News Channel. Check out the CBN News Daily Rundown podcast each weekday with me, Caitlin Burke. Click on the show tab at CBNNews.com where you can listen and subscribe. Welcome back. The Mandate of Heaven. It's the ancient belief in China it had a divine right to rule the world. And since taking power eight years ago, Xi Jinping has been working to fulfill that vision, rebuilding its military, its economy, and political power. And as George Thomas now shows us, the Chinese leader is talking about global dominance. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French military leader, said more than two centuries ago that China is a sleeping lion. Let her sleep, for when she wakes, she will shake the world. China's President Xi Jinping has emphatically declared that the lion has awakened. Reaching back to the language of his imperial ancestors, Xi announced during his first speech as president in 2012 that his nation would embark on the Great Rejuvenation Project. Which, to put it into sort of Trumpian terms, means to make China great again. Tom Miller documents China's rise in the book China's Asian Dream, empire building along the new Silk Road. Miller says since taking the reins, President Xi has been on a trajectory of preparing China to be the world's dominant power. Under Xi Jinping, you know, China has been very, very deliberately um, trying to realize its kind of ambition to become the global superpower. And Xi wants to achieve that goal within the next three decades. Um, it talks about its centenary goal. So the People's Republic of China was founded in, in 1949, and by 2049, China wants to be the global um, superpower. Chinese scholars say it's also part of the 67-year-old's deep belief that his country has a divine right to rule the world. The mandate of heaven is from China's imperial past. Um, where Chinese emperors believed that they not only had the right, but they were compelled by heaven to rule the world. And there's this notion of Tianxia, or all under heaven. One way is by military force. As commander-in-chief of the world's largest fighting force, she has remade China's People's Liberation Army, or PLA, into a military rapidly closing the gap on U.S. firepower. I think we've just been incredibly impressed and surprised, frankly, by how fast the Chinese military has modernized. Zach Cooper is a China scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and lecturer at Princeton University. If you look at what they've done in the last three decades, we've seen about double-digit growth in the defense expenditures for most of that time. The results could mean a significant threat to the United States, her allies, and the Asia-Pacific's balance of power. It is likely that China will seek to build a military that is equal to, or in some cases superior to, the U.S. military or the military of any other great power that China perceives as a potential threat. The Pentagon revealing for the first time that China now has the world's largest navy and plans to double its nuclear warhead arsenal in this decade, which includes ballistic missiles that can reach the United States. This has been a tremendous change from a Chinese military, which back uh, in the 1990s was, was not even really considered a peer in any way with that of the United States. Gordon Chang warns that China is also adapting its military capabilities to kill Americans. Well, it is a great military threat to the USA because China is developing weapons that are specifically targeting um, American aircraft carriers and others. China warning the United States against selling advanced weapons system to Taiwan, an island territory that Beijing claims sovereignty over and has vowed to take back by force if necessary. This seriously interferes in China's internal affairs and seriously damages China's sovereignty and security interests. China firmly opposes this. The South China Morning Post reporting that Beijing is beefing up its military capabilities for possible invasion of Taiwan. And while China continues to secure its borders and coastal waters, Xi is also projecting power far from home. The Pentagon reports citing Chinese plans to open U.S.-style military bases from Asia to Africa to South America. We're really seeing an expansion of China's military footprint in a way that uh, certainly wouldn't have been uh, expected maybe 10 years ago. And I think we're just going to see that accelerate 
as China grows stronger, it's going to have more reason to go out into the world and uh, try and protect its trade routes. And that means more of a Chinese military presence, not just in East Asia, but actually beyond as well. China is also relying on its economy and technological prowess. In 2013, President Xi launched China's Belt and Road Initiative, sometimes referred to as the New Silk Road. Stretching from East Asia to Europe to Africa, China is busy building roads, railways, airports, dams, power grids, ports, bridges, and the list goes on, all in an attempt to gain economic, political, and diplomatic partnerships around the world. No, it's expanded from about 65 countries originally, all more or less neighbors of China's, to encompass most of the developing world. So there are now more than 140 countries around the world which um, are officially a part of this initiative. Then, two years later, in 2015, the government in Beijing launched Made in China 2025 with the aim of being a technological superpower. It launched initiatives in high-tech industries such as robotics, artificial intelligence, and next-generation technology and telecommunications. China is doing its best not only to, to, to buy up tech from other countries, and we've seen the U.S. pushing back against that very hard um, in recent years, but also to kind of create that tech itself. Miller says unlike Chinggis Khan and his Mongol empire, she isn't trying to build an empire in the classic sense. Instead, he argues that China, under Xi, wants to become an economic, military, and technological juggernaut that will surpass the United States and dominate the world for the foreseeable future. Do I think that China, like the Mongols, is going to you know, sort of send hordes of people across Eurasia to kind of invade other countries? No, I don't. Um, so it's not going to be an empire in that sense. Um, when I use the word empire, I'm talking more in terms of an economic and diplomatic empire, um, in terms of global spheres of influence. China's neighbors watch her rise with mixed feelings. In America, levels of anxiety about China are at historic highs. The Trump administration has put Xi's government on notice for its handling of the coronavirus pandemic, its poor human rights record, trade imbalance, and a host of other thorny issues. Still, as the author of a recent political article wrote, America and the world doesn't get to veto China's rise, only to reckon with it. The question is, what will that reckoning look like in the years to come as China continues to get stronger? George Thomas, CBN News. Still ahead, there is something in the water. Studio 5 has exclusive first look at Music Man for Rel Williams' personal journey home to build an unforgettable gospel choir. We're igniting the voices of fire next. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm Ephraim Graham. Welcome to Studio Five. Get on it. All that's new and now in the world of uplifting entertainment with celebrity interviews. There's a higher contribution I will make. Musical performances. I'll give you my best praise. Plus movie and TV news. See it and be uplifted. On Studio 5. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern at CBN.com forward slash Studio 5. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. 
easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Music man Pharrell Williams was born and raised in Hampton Roads, Virginia. And when it comes to music talent from the area, he often says there's something in the water. With musicians Missy Elliott, Teddy Riley, and Wayne Newton among the famous artists from the region. But now Pharrell is shining a light on some undiscovered homegrown talent with a new Netflix series called Voices of Fire. Studio 5 has this exclusive first look at what's truly a personal journey to build an unforgettable choir. Give me a second. Yeah, okay. You're all right. At last, my love has come along, and life is like a song. <laughs> trying to tell you. <laughs> I am Bishop Ezekiel Williams. I've always had a dream to build the world's most inspirational choir. Pharrell is my nephew, and we recruited a panel of expert judges. If we didn't have to pay for it, I'd tell you to drop the mic. <laughs> Each singer will just have one shot. There will be no callbacks. And you should probably judge them on their ability to be compatible. So we'll do what I like to call a shaking the tree. Now, if she kills this, the spot is hers. I want to share my life through music. I want to help others the way others' music have helped me. We have a lot of people that are doing things that they should not be able to do. I suffer from social anxiety. When I came to, I was paralyzed from the neck down and told I'd never walk again. Suicide attempts, they failed. So, like, I have no choice but to keep going. Wow. How many real opportunities in life do you get? I want to be in this choir pretty bad and contribute to something bigger than myself. Without further ado, the voices of fire. Voices of Fire begins streaming on Netflix Friday. We're sitting down with a leading member of the show, choir master Patrick Riddick, on tonight's all-new edition of Studio 5, along with actor Antonio Sabato Jr. and singing siblings Michael Tate and Linda Randall. You can catch it all on the CBN News Channel at 9.30 Eastern. Coming up, country music legend Dolly Parton doing her part to help defeat the coronavirus. We're going to tell you what she did when we come back. Stay with us. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. 
Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, protect your brain, and get it today. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. Regents first ROTC graduate student. Country music legend Dolly Parton donated a million dollars to help fund the new coronavirus vaccine for Moderna Therapeutics. The Knoxville News Sentinel reports Parton was one of the donors to Vanderbilt University Medical Center. It's all according to a preliminary report from the New England Journal of Medicine. Researchers at Vanderbilt and elsewhere helped to make the vaccine possible. Dolly Parton tweeted, when I donated the money to the COVID fund, I just wanted it to do good. And evidently, it is. Let's just hope we find a cure real soon. And finally, this half hour, it is time for your Wednesday word. And today's word is dream. This is a great day to dream and dream again. If you are still breathing, your story is still being written. New pages, new chapters, and even new books are in your future. And God's hand holds the pen. With that word, dream and dream again, you're alive. So dream. That's going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel at any time. You can also find them online at cbnnews.com. Let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you will make it a wonderful Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye. God bless.